Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Love how those stories almost always come with some manager using definite words like always, only, never. You would think they'd teach that. I always instantly think of ways to get around that. Anything is possible. Can someone levitate up into space without a suit and go to live on the sun? Never give up. Just dumb ideological crap, not to be used in instructions to workers. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Micromanager. I had a micromanager who used to yell at me for prepping food items that were not on the food prep list when asked to do so by other managers, team leads, and associates, including general manager, who was not MM, as well as for doing things that were not part of my assigned duties for the day. We had prep list and duties printed out with our names and time slots for said duties. This last part's key. Threats and yelling included threats to fire my tranny hoe butt. Yes, I'm openly trans. And no, I've never received any payments for XXX services. So from that day on, I follow his word as law. MM needs seven containers of sliced tomatoes? Sorry, the list says to make five. MM needs more teriyaki bowls? Sorry, but the list says to make zero today. MM needs me on dish because he needs soup bowls and plates? Sorry, but the duty roster says that I'm on food prep and trash duty only. MM needs me on dish from 1 to 4 p.m.? Sorry, but the roster says that I'm on dish from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and on food prep from 11 a.m. until my shift end at 2 p.m. MM needs me helping out dining room because we have call outs. Sorry, but I'm on dish and food prep only today. GM wants me on dish, but MM needs food prep. Sorry, but MM threatened to fire my tranny hoe butt if I don't do what the roster slash list says I am to do. Please ask someone else to do dish. What? You still need me to do it? Okay, guess I'm fired then. MM stopped complaining after he realized that the only competent, as in didn't break 60 plates a day, food prep and dishwasher willing to work weekends, was willing to walk out. Note, about three months later, I did give my two weeks. At the exit interview, I responded to the reason why I was leaving as being treated as a sex object by creepy 40-year-old married men who have 7-year-old daughters and 17-year-old boys. Note 2. Before MM1 would stay past my shift in to help out, I always clocked in early even if I was two hours early to my shift and was always willing to help other associates with things like refilling their drawers when it was super busy, helping the dining person clean up the middle schooler hurricane on Friday nights, and over prepping stuff so that the caterer didn't have to do it when he came in two hours later. Note 3. After MM, I did exactly what was required of me, clocked in exactly when my shift started, took my full 30-minute break. I used to clock back in if my meal only took 15 minutes to eat, clocked out at my exact shift end, not even staying to finish the list if I didn't finish everything on it. They went from me covering five people's jobs to having to hire, train, and replace five people's jobs when I stopped doing extra and the new people quit two to three weeks in every time. Additionally, a couple of the other girls, I'm trans femme, also joined in on the fun, including a woman who hated my lesbian tranny existence. That one surprised me as we equally hated each other, so I didn't expect support from her. Final note, I toned down the kind of insult MM used and kept 98% of the sleazy crap he suggested out of this post. It was stuff that was really dark and would make my MC tale look like some tall tale written by a drug addict to even myself. Like, even I can't believe I went through that crap. Congratulations, MM. You effed up big. Get bent, Strang Corporation. Well done. Sounds like you handled it exactly the way they wanted you to. It never ceases to amaze me how some managers will cut off their nose to spite their face. It also sounds like you may have grounds for some kind of hostile work environment given the abuse heaped on you. And our second story fired my manager, and opened my own restaurant. I work in a cloud kitchen which prepares food from 10 different brands. I was working as a shift manager when I quit. In this company, every year, 23 days are allotted as paid leave for every employee. I haven't taken one extra day off since I worked there two years. So a few weeks back, I got into an accident outside work. I didn't get hospitalized right away as it was just a fall, which was my mistake. 
Next day, I went to work as well, but during work, the real dreadful pain started and I took half a day off. The manager complained a lot that I'm irresponsible to leave the crew behind for all the work, but he gave the half day off to go see a doctor. After several tests and scans, I got to know that I had a torn ligament and shoulder and need at least three days of rest to heal. The doc gave a letter to show to my workplace as well. The manager denied me any leave because apparently the staff aren't trained enough to be left alone in the kitchen, which is not true as everyone there have worked there at least a year and do handle the store when I have my week offs. I called HR and got my leaves approved anyways. Next day morning, this manager guy starts calling like crazy. When I picked up after walking from some very drowsy kinds of painkillers, he screamed at me so much, he said he'll get me fired and he'll block my salary if I didn't get to work right now. I told him firmly, there's no way I'm coming, and cut the call. After a while, I get a call from HR saying I'm being removed from the manager's training program. I was under training to become a store manager because I'm not capable anymore according to the current manager's report and also I'm being shifted to another store for insubordination. I called the manager and asked what happened. He screamed a bit more and said if I get there in the next 10 minutes, he'll reconsider. I lost my crap and told him to F off. I got fired. I also am in the process of sending a very big mail to the operations team and accounts team as I have all the records of this manager cutting costs and also proof of him taking stuff to his house. Update. So some details I missed about the company. I was found by four hotelier friends who were tired of working for crappy people. They took loans and started this company two years before COVID lockdown. During lockdown, food delivery was in high demand and they managed to open around 30 branches all over the state from the sales during that time. The owners know most people personally and usually visit every branch once a week. The place I worked was their first shop to open, so they have their head office there. The shift manager in HR is from the same location, so anything told to HR usually is leaked out to the manager. People were scared to tell this to anyone. So in my mail, I had voice recordings from all the times this manager shouted at me and also some very derogatory things he said about the women's staff in the shop. Also had pictures of orders with timestamps so they can check the CCTV. Also had pictures of this guy reducing portion sizes for cost cutting without informing anyone for e.g. sending normal sauce when customer paid extra for diet sauce. The mail blew up as I cc'd it to the owners, operations head, HR head, city manager, cluster manager, and the crappy manager. I first got a call from operations head at 1 a.m. Asked me why wasn't this informed earlier. I told him if I did that, my life would have been made hell by the manager and staff is suffering under him. He was pissed. Next day from morning, I got around 20 calls. The owners, city manager, and all put me in conference call. All were livid AF. The HR was also on call, and she was silent to all the things they asked her. Told me that he's talking very badly about the women there, and that is extremely inappropriate. Begged me not to post in anywhere in social media. I agreed, as the owners are not that bad. The manager got demoted to shift manager and transferred to a faraway branch. This is a trick done by the company to make people leave instead of firing them so they don't have to clear any dues. Then the manager did the worst mistake of calling me. He shouted badly. He cursed and screamed. I was calm because I was recording. Now and then I gave him stuff to talk about and then he said something along the lines of killing me if I ever set foot in the city. After hanging up, I sent another mail with the same recipients and also told them I'll be contacting police for threatening me and posting the recording in social media for breaking the deal of peace. The guy got fired in a few hours. My coworker called me very gleefully saying the manager trashed his office before leaving. City manager is calling cops about that. I'm going to let them handle it. For me, I leased a restaurant near my hometown. In the process of taking in a few very talented but underpaid workers from my old job, it's opening by the end of January. Better to be an entrepreneur than work under crap conditions. Great job, OP. I think it would be worth it if you considered the idea of a cooperative model. It seems like you know your coworkers well and get along with them. I think a shared ownership model could benefit you all. I'm happy with this outcome. The sad thing is that manager will never realize he was the problem and will continue to cause issues. And our last story. HOA blocked my driveway to my farm. 
When I moved to my farm, I was expecting all sorts of things. Blistering sun, stubborn cacti, and maybe a run-in with some wild critters. But what I sure as heck didn't expect was a fence popping up overnight on my way home like some kind of sorcery. And not just any old fence, but a full-on fortress wall with gates and a lock like a medieval castle decided to squat in my backyard. Is this some effing kind of joke, I thought to myself, pulling up to this newfangled obstruction in my pickup? Squinting a bit, I saw a sign, Welcome to the Golden Sunset HOA. Name's kinda like the real deal, but not quite. Membership required. Sure thing, I could just picture my chickens filling out application forms and my goats debating the agenda for the next meeting. Had a bull bar on my pickup, so I gave them gates a gentle nudge and snap goes the lock. Turns out the HOA wasn't kidding around. Some fella named Bob, decked out in a cardigan and clutching a ballpoint pen, tells me my farm smack dab in the middle of their expansion zone. To access my own home, I gotta join their fancy fence club and cough up dues for... Well, the right to drive through my own darn driveway, I guess. Or they'd sue me for busting through their gates. Gates they put up on my land without so much as a buy your leave. Trying to talk sense was like talking to a brick wall. Every letter from the HOA was more hogwash and less common sense. Got to thinking at one point, maybe I should train my llamas as pets so they could sign a petition against the HOA, but figured the paper might disagree with their digestion. So armed with a sense of humor and a lawyer buddy of mine who reckoned the whole thing was a bluff, I stood my ground. No sane person would think this'll fly, he said, but lo and behold, a week later, I get slapped with a lawsuit for wrecking not one, but two sets of their gates. The second set? Beats me. Ended up in court a couple of times. You should have seen the judge's face listening to Bob's spiel about how I ain't got no rights to land my great-granddaddy bot with his sweat and blood. When the judge ordered them to tear down the gates and restore the land to how it was, Bob started hollering like a banshee, pretending to have a stroke right there. Your Honor, I'll die for this land. A couple days later, Bob and a couple of other crusty old coots were picketing outside my place, cussing like sailors. Never heard such foul language till I stepped out with my shotgun and reminded them whose land it was. Didn't know those stuffy snobs could run so fast. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.